that has anything more costly on the film side. <laughs> I don't know, actually. It's probably not. <laughs> well, but, but let's talk a little bit. Uh, I'm, oh, yeah, Mike. Uh, the, the thing that is really interesting that always comes up with these kinds of things, when you see a, a, sto a story about a storyteller, people always wonder, well, how much of this person is in this character? So when you made this movie, how much were you Adolfo Rolo? You know, there's a lot of a lot of me, uh, Adolfo Rolo, and it's funny to watch the movie because I, I was just watching it with you guys. I haven't seen it in a long time. I'm more Seymour Cassell now. <laughs> I'm more Joe. I, I, like, I have a few students. I teach at NYU. A few of them are here. But that's the character I am now. Like, you know, I, I, when he tells him, make a love story, um, I was more the guy with the Tarkovsky and the, and the um, you know, all of the, uh, the Nietzsche and Tarkovsky kind of you know, stuff. And, um, and now I'm kind of just make a love story. Just, just say it straight. And, um, but you did. You yeah, did. I, I guess I did it. It was kind of a catharsis there. I mean, you taught me, Steve. You, you taught me how to love again. <laughs> yeah, Steve, when I, I was cracking up, I'm sorry, I just have to say, I cracked up. It's so weird to watch the movie, but you know when you got the glass on the, on the, on the wall and you're listening to Angelica? Steve and I were alone. Do you remember we were alone rehearsing that scene? Yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes like, what am I listening to her do, Alex? <laughs> I'm going, well, you know, she's doing something over there. And he just, and we, we had our little lunch break alone, and he, and he inhaled an entire egg. Well, it was an egg sandwich. It was an egg sandwich. And, was, and you uh, inhaled it. And, I, and, 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 and we were laughing so hard, and, and I was choking. <laughs> For real. And, For real. And I thought, I'm going to die. And you think I'm joking. And I'm laughing hysterically. He's turning blue and tears are pouring down his face. And he's laughing. You're laughing. I'm still man. laughing. And you know something? I was just thinking, you, know, you should have died, man. It would have been no Steve Buscemi movies after that. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. I didn't want him to die. No, but I mean, you know, since it was a weird thing. That could have been it. Kaboom. But he almost died. But he coughed up a perfect egg, unmarked, unchewed on. <laughs> the director's commentary. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm sorry. I'll, I'll well, well, Steve, tell us a little bit about reading this character since it was written for you at this particular stage of your career. What, 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 was, what did you glean? From I think I'm Mike. Yeah. Why am I not a Mike? Because your microphone fell off. Oh, my microphone fell off. I don't know that you wrote this for me, but you wrote yeah, it for... I, you wrote I it felt really? guilty. Oh, that's right, because I auditioned, I that's right. I auditioned for Alex's movie, Sons, the one that he made previously to this. And it was one of those <laughs> auditions where, man, that was great. And I was there for like an hour. Well, you got the part. Doing improvs, doing, you know, he's like, oh my God, <laughs> look at this guy, all right, we're, we're going to call you. And then, you know, and you called me to tell me that I didn't get the part. <laughs> But he said on the phone, he says, but you know, uh, someday I'm going to write something for you. That's right. I forgot I, I all about that. You. I met you said, someday I'm going to write something for you, and, and uh, we're going to make the, and we're going to make a film. Yeah. And I went, okay, thanks. And I thought, I'll never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but we stayed in touch, and then you, and you, and you did it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you. you. just think he realized he had an avenue I don't have a good memory. <laughs> It's just a great snapshot of a moment for you as an actor. I mean, this movie was at Sundance the same year as Reservoir Dogs. Mm. It couldn't be more different. I mean, what, what did you make of sort of the, the challenge of, of playing that particular character when you had you know, so many other kinds of parts you were doing at the time? This was, this was before Reservoir Dogs, and um, I hadn't done a lot of stuff. I had done some, some stuff. It was just, I just wanted to work, and um, it was, you know, amazing to be on set with, uh, I mean, everybody, uh, and, but then to be on a set with uh, Seymour, whose work that I knew so well from the, from the Casavetes films. And um, I don't know, we just, like, we put in, like, long days, and uh, it was, uh, we just lived it. I mean, that's, you know, I think when we made movies then, you, I mean, that's all, that's all we did. Oh, just did. all day long into the night. And, you know, just a few you hours guys, sleep and then just get up and just... To give you guys an idea, he made that movie. He just went off and made that movie. He was so into this thing. He brought his, you know, his baby in it. And, and then, you know, as I would, you know, as we'd start running out of money, I'd do a lot of this. And Jenny can tell you, like, you know, we'd, you know I'd, be like, I'd be sweating because we'd ran out of money. And, 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 and Steve would, you know, i kind of look in front of Steve and say, we're running out of money. And Steve, then I just start vacuuming. He, he keep giving back, you know, he keep giving back the money. He, you know, he, I don't think you got paid. Like you can't, and he was he was broke at that time, but he gave back his salary, uh, you know, 
We lived and breathed making well, the movie. Well, we wanted to finish it. And when he says, I made, I made the movie, so Adolfo, you know, shows a short film, his, his short film, and it's just, and it's in the script, and I kept saying, what is this film? Are we, like, when are we going to do, do, do this? And he said, well, why don't you do it? And that was the greatest preparation for, you know, for this character, for uh, being a, someone who wants to be a fi filmmaker, to have to go now and make his own film. Luckily, I'm married to a filmmaker, Joe Andres, and Thanks, Joe. She, she made the film. I mean, I was <laughs> tagging along. And, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got my brother in it, my son, and my dad, and so it's just nice to, to have yeah, that great. in there. And, yeah. We'll have to have that restoration back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I made a much longer film. He only showed like 10 seconds. <laughs> if you really can. It's 400 hours long. <laughs> so, so Jennifer, what was it like when you first discovered this, uh, this character and this project? What was your take on it? Well, Alex and I were married at the time. And we're still friends, so it's good. <laughs> good. Oh, and so, <laughs> so, so it, was, uh, it was revealed quite often. I think, didn't they type the script? You like, you would did. hand write the you pages. You certainly proofread it. And then I, I would proofread it, and I, then I would type it. So I would read it as it came, you know, the different drafts came through. And you never know if it's going to get financed. I mean, we had some really interesting meetings with different financiers. And, uh, and it was the kind of thing where literally before we were even beginning filming, technically filming, it started to snow outside. And so that sequence that's on the roof uh, is a sequence where Alex just said, okay, it's snowing. Let's, let's grab a camera and run up to the roof and go shoot something. Let's go shoot the sequence. And, and I didn't really have anything ready. I think Lizzie had pulled a few things for me for wardrobe, but we hadn't, we hadn't really decided on things. But it was just like, let's go. It's beautiful. It's the, it's the feeling of the film, and, and I just remember running upstairs and with our dog, Yura, who was in the, the shot, and Sam, and, and just, um, you know, just creating this moment. And, and that's what, what the whole film felt like, really. Like, it was just, every moment you just, you just dive into that moment for the love of this project. And uh, it wasn't like, okay, you're going to shoot this, this day, this day. It wasn't that... Uh, delineated like it is now, and it certainly it, it wasn't as bureaucratic or anything like that. It was just like let's just go make a film, and it was really exciting. So, so how much of you did you bring to that character? I mean, how did you guys sort of flesh her out? Because she's got she's got so many different registers you know, throughout the movie. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't really remember that part so much. To be honest, like I just. Um, I remember you working really hard on the accent. You really got that done. Yes, you, you that went, was really you went, fun. We knew a lot of Dominicans back then. Remember? And we yeah, were, yeah. You, you really you recorded it with, with, with a lot of Dominicans. And remember the kids? We just found those kids and we brought them. They were <laughs> right next to the building. We just brought them right up. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. And yeah. She, yeah. She's yeah. spanking them. The kids are crying. I'm oh like, no, they were crying. They were laughing. You saw one them of them laughing. Was they thought it was yeah. hilarious. One, one cried. One cried. Remember that little girl's kind of at the end staring. <laughs> I love that. And the art direction, you know, I don't know if you guys know Mark Freeberg. You know, he's done a lot of movies with Jim Jarmusch and, yeah. and many people. I mean, he did such an amazing job with that set, didn't he, Phil? Yeah. Phil, by the way, DP, extraordinary. <laughs> is, is, is this film not the most beautiful black and white? I mean, you know, Phil, remember the hours we spent getting that, getting that look right? Oh yeah, that's quite a story. Actually. It's really, really a story. <laughs> we shot the film, and actually, the, the film was shot in color. I don't know if you. I mean, probably not. We, I mean, back in the day when we shot this, the only black and white film stocks that were available was, um, I think, plus X and double X, and they had, they were really, um, they had really worked on those emotions in 20 or 30 years, and they were very grainy and very slow. And I said. The hell it's, why don't we try to shoot it on color negative? And of course, he didn't want to do that because he really learned in black and white. And his fear is that they would release the film in color if we shot it in mm -hmm. color. Actually, came true on a couple of times. But well, I they mean, did release. Yeah, they did release part of it in, in a couple of countries, right? They had 
released it in color. Oh, theatrical. But we worked for months and months to try to get this print to look like this yeah. with Don Donaghy at uh, photo at, at Duart. Duart, right? Mm -hmm. Duart. Yeah. And he finally came up with this process, which was uh, a fine grain master stock called 5369, and uh, was it's used for titles. And we printed on it. I mean, we had been, actually, we were watching dailies on a film stock called ST8, which was uh, an Agfa film stock, black and white, that looked like Xerox. I mean, it was like totally black and white, but no midtones at all. And we loved looking at dailies like that. And, and we thought, well, can we get something like that for the release print? And then he printed it on the 69, and the 69 was incredible. I mean, it was like, you know, it's a panchromatic, which means it's sensitive to colors, and you know, you get a full range of color of, of the black and white. I mean, I mean, I was really impressed. I actually, I, I sort of had a little bit to do with the making of this, but not really much. They found a, they found a. What happened is that we took the color negative. I don't know if this is interesting. Right? <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. No, no. It's interesting. We took the color negative, <laughs> and we printed it on a black, this black and white stock. Uh, and we used that as a as a master, and then uh, and then we made like three or four prints like this because it was so expensive to use this phone. Like Thirty thousand dollars a print. It was yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there were like four prints struck. The three, three. There were three. One of them was shown at Sundance, and then they used and the, and the and they used one as an interpositive to make to strike <laughs> prints off of it, right? And that's the one you found in, in France, the, right? The interpositive. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. they, they right. took but the, the IP was exactly the same as the print. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is what it looked like at Sunday. Yeah, this is what it looked like at Sunday. And, exactly. and, and it looked great. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting, I think from a 21st century perspective on all this, is that it's very easy now with a digital camera to run around and shoot a movie with no rules or anything. But what were some of the practical challenges of just you know making sure you had enough film to be that fast and loose shooting movie. Like well, you know, the thing is, if you look at the film, it's very deliberate. Like, like uh, we had like we were shooting in the early, late spring, and we wanted to make it look like winter, so that Steve would, you know, yeah. jump out of the car with a mouthful of cigarette smoke. Remember? I remember that. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking. You remember you know, that scene where he's shivering, he's waiting shoot, for the bus. Shoot the shot on the roof in the winter time. Yeah. And then, and then, the we, then we're shooting in the summertime in New Jersey, and it's got to look like winter, so we're like blowing feathers across yeah. the road. Yep. <laughs> Shaving. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is that what I really love about this is that you know, digital f filmmaking is, is kind of running and gunning, which is, you know, it's great, it's interesting, it's a, new, it's a different thing. But we set everything up, like uh, there's a lot of like shots where Phil really worked out some beautiful moves and some, you know, um, some really elegant uh, camera moves and some very steady shots. And because you were working in 35 film and we were pretty broke, we had very little money, there was, you know, we wouldn't just do take after take. So that I think that, um, there's a, there's a kind of a looseness within the structure of this movie, which I, I'm watching and I'm really enjoying. I, I love the scene when they're in the car with Will Patton and, you know, rest his soul, uh, Rocket's Red Glare when they're talking, when they're smelling the gun and everything. I just love the, 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 the you know, the, the, the structure of that, or when he learns the cha-cha. Mm -hmm. It's just a locked-off camera. It's not a bunch of handheld stuff. It's just a locked-off camera so you can see the actors. You really could see the actors blossom in a, in a, in a, in a, in a structured frame like and that. And the shot was Sully, too, was it? Just one shot. The shot with Sully. The, yeah. yeah, when Sully oh, gets uh, Sully. Hole. Yeah, Sully, Sully Boyer. That that scene with the old man is one of I think it's probably my one of my, my favorite scenes uh, I've ever been part of. I just was. I, you watch Steve. He's just listening. He's just listening. I think it must have just really. Well, been he amazing. really was struggling too. When he said he didn't know where he was, he meant in his in his dialogue. But, yeah. uh, no, Alex told him, well, don't stop. I don't care what happens. Any, you can't do anything wrong. Just keep going. And so you didn't say cut. I stayed in the scene. And, he, mm -hmm. and then, he, then he got it back. Yeah. But then, when, of course, when you watch the scene, you think he yeah. he's, doesn't know where he is mm -hmm. in, in his life or in, in the house, but he really couldn't he didn't know where he was. I was a good director back then. <laughs> now I'm like, come on, just say the damn line. Well, the Josh that Josh scene is set, it's such a great motif. I mean, it makes you wonder just how much that was thought through. How, how, how long were you shooting, doing that? Because it kind of feels like you're trying to figure out exactly what the move should be anyway. 
Well, actually, that, that scene is a funny scene because it was one take. That scene, and it was, that scene is literally like four lines in, of uh, the scene was just, Adolfo tries to learn the cha-cha. That's all it said, you know? And Joe had his line, I had mine, and it was just like a back and forth of like four lines. And Alex's direction was, I don't care what you do in the scene, just really try and learn. And he wouldn't let me hear the record, of course, before the, the, the <laughs> he asked me, can I at least listen to it? <laughs> He's like, no, just play it and, and we'll film it. And so I just really tried to learn it. Even, and I even tell Seymour to like, shut up during the, you know, I'm like, I'm like, because I, I didn't get it yet. <laughs> How much of what we see Seymour do is Seymour in this movie? I mean, he's such oh a, God, by the time he does his role, you know, he's, he's, it's all Seymour. It's that's mm -hmm. that's that's really who. That he dance, is. that dance, that night yeah, under the bridge. The dance. It was all yeah. him. It's just he dances, and then he just goes off and does and this you know, magical he was, thing. He was incredibly annoying. It's incredibly. I would throw coffee at him, and I mean, bring yeah, you guys to would me, fight. I would fight him physically. And then I remember, you know, you got. Remember, I, I knew it would get you so mad. There was a take where she's at the elevator. She, she has to get really upset. And I told Seymour, you know, you make her upset. I mean, you can make anyone upset in half a second. So he like threw, he did something to you. I forget what I he did. Right know. before I said like, action, he did something, something. And I was like, she was gonna tear your head off. She was so mad. But he was, he's, he's an instigator. He got yeah. that from Cassavetes a lot. Is it like, I mean, Cassavetes was a real instigator. He was always, and would work a lot with, Cassavetes was, you know, Jenna Rollins was, was um, uh, is a lady. She's a, if you've ever known her or met her, she's a real dignified lady. And John was always trying to like mess with her, so he to tickle her and push her, and, and, it, and there was a great chemistry there. And Seymour has that that ability to kind of tickle and prod, and, and it's really fun to be part of. Uh, part of it. It's also interesting because Cassavetes was a filmmaker who emerged at a very particular moment, sort of the, this pioneering independent filmmaker. By the time you made this movie, it's a very different kind of climate. There was already, already this real prevalent idea, especially in New York sort of underground scene of what an independent filmmaker was. We see Jim Jarmusch in there for a second, you know, yeah. sort of that, that mythology. I mean, you know, how much w was this movie sort of responding to all that? I mean, it was like being a rock and roll, but back in the day, I think being a filmmaker was like being a rock and roll guy. It felt, like, it felt exciting to make these kind of movies, like, like rock and roll was exciting. It was, rock, you know, punk music and the mud club and all these clubs and stuff we would go to at night and I, and I just felt that it was a really we were inventing the world kind of like that's how I felt and 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 it was music and it was filmmaking and there weren't tons of people doing it believe it or not there really were very few I mean Jim and I were were, were friends right away because we just you know we call, I called him on the phone after I saw um, uh, what was the first one Stranger. No, the one before Strangers. Uh, permanent permanent vacation. vacation. I just called him on the phone. He said, you know, I said, hey man, you got to be a filmmaker. And he said, um. And I said, you got to keep making films. And he said, no, I want to be a rock and roll. I want to play rock and roll. I said, no, you know, it's not that you listen to me. Okay? But he said, no, you got to make films. But, it, but that was what it was like down there at, at that time. Yeah. And, because um, the whole thing was transformative, like rock and roll. And, and it was in the, not only in the content, but in the process of making the film. You know, it was like, go in there and fuck it up and make a mess, and you'll find something true. Yeah. You know, but just go do it, like you're talking about in the film. Steve, what was your read on all that? I mean, you'd already done a bunch of films with various in independent filmmakers at that particular moment. It, um, I mean, I had come off of uh, my first commercial film. I, uh, um, right before this, I did this film, Billy Bathgate. And I was on set a lot with not much to do. And it was, I mean, I loved the people that I was uh, working with, but it was just sort of frustrating as an actor to see, you know, how much time it took them to set up the shot and all this, and then to go from that to this film where I, you know, was almost in every scene, and then, but just working every day, like really working, um, I loved it. It's, it's, you know, it's, that's, 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 that's why I wanted to become an actor. It was a dream come true, you know. And of course, the, the other voice we don't have representative from the cast is Sam Rockwell, who sort of materializes out of nowhere and right. where you least expect him. And what, where, did, where did he come from? We were in acting class together. 
Yeah, yeah we, 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 well, we went to Bill Esper's acting class, and he was in your class, he right? He was in my class, and I said, oh, there's this guy who's really, really good. Whatever became of him? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate, because he really no hasn't problem. done many films. It's a weird Such thing. A it's a very a risky movie. business. Yeah. You know the story about Sundance in this film, right? The film was rejected from Sundance. And I mean, I mean this was... I, I just want to say this was a seminal experience for everybody who, who was involved with this film. And it was like a club. Everybody loved everybody else. And and sub, as and subsequently in the years, I mean, I'm 76 now. I think I did this film when I was like in my... 14. 14. <laughs> but I've kept in contact with everybody and everybody kind of like... But anyway, the short of the thing is that, it, that, that everybody you know, was behind this film, we wanted, you know, we wanted it to be successful, and we entered it in Sundance, and it got projected. And everybody was like, oh, shit, right? this was like the chance to get the film out there. And then at the last moment, like a week before the film was, the, the festival was to start, House got a telephone call and said that we had the, one of the other films dropped out. Can you get this film ready? All right? I don't even think there was a print by that time. Right. So, like in the like in four days, we finished the film and got it to Sundance, and then everybody, everybody from the film went to Sundance. It was like, yeah. mm -hmm. I think everybody, I mean, it was like a, there must have been like twenty people who worked on the movie who came, and then it, then every screening was incredible. People would stand up and applaud for like ten minutes after the movie. It was like, what the fuck did we make it? <laughs> <laughs> and then it won. The audience award, right? No, the grand jury. Well, yeah. one both. Yeah, but you don't want to bring controversy into it. Don't bring controversy. Okay. It did. It did. Yeah. It won both. It won the audience award. Did it? Oh, Are you no, sure? No, no. It won the, it won grand, the grand jury. jury. Won and Seymour won, won the first acting. Right. That's won, right. It, it won, won the won audience award. Yes. Okay. I didn't vote for it. It was. <laughs> that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you had better odds than most people yeah. that year. But what, what was that like, though, winning the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance at that particular moment? You know, the movie didn't go on to become a huge hit, but that wasn't necessarily because of what happened there. So, so you know, what was that like? It, it was very weird. I, they asked me, I'm so, I was so naive, I'd never won anything. I, I swear, I, I've never won anything in my life. I, I, I don't know. I just, I, you know, I never want to think. So I, when they asked me to sit in the front row, I was like, "Why are they giving me the front? Why am I in the front row?" I think, you know. And all of us, I, I swear, this is the truth. And all of a sudden, uh, they say in the soup, and I, I couldn't talk. I, 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 I was, you know, I'd lay, I, I cry easy. It's terrible. I cry easy. But I was, I think, I was completely blown away. And I have to remember, I, you know, I'll say something really sweet about Quentin because I know he gets, he's a controversial guy sometimes. But I'll never forget Quentin because he was this geeky kind of like hulky. Dude, you know, and everyone was talking about uh, in um, Reservoir Dogs at the time, and I thought Reservoir Dogs was going to win, and everyone, you know, was, you know, it's a very good movie, and, and I thought it was going to win, and he was, and, and every it was a big war between us and Reservoir Dogs. I guess I was unaware of it, but but um, uh, what happened is the night we won, Quentin came up to me and goes, <laughs> you know, he goes, man, and he goes, and he goes. I just gotta hug you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he hugged me, like, you know, like he shuddered and was like, you know, I invited him to stay with me in New York after that we became pretty good friends. But uh, but he was very sweet of him to 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 give that up, um, to get that because he he wanted to win. Uh, hey, you know, it's one of few things okay. since, right? He's done all right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was a curse. Anyway, but uh, but what happened with the release? Of the release of the film, it got boned. It really was a drag. It was like it got it. The, the company that bought it went bankrupt uh, right after. It, they didn't even buy it for much, but it was mishandled. It was a problem, and then they had it, and then they went bankrupt. So it, all the prints disappeared. Everything disappeared. But it had, you know, it had like two weeks. Great reviews. Won awards. You know, went everywhere in the world. Went everywhere, and then boom, it got. It just got sucked away. But in a weird, in a weird way, I kind of like that. I, you know, I mean, obviously, it would have been nicer for me if it had been a bigger film, but. I, I do love the fact that this film is a special film. I've had people who see it come up to me and say they, you know, they went, they, they got married after they saw the film, and ever since why it really meant something to a lot of people. It was a film that really had an impact. I, and a lot of people, like I get letters from Yugoslavia and all kinds of places where saying I was a young filmmaker and 
and this movie made me want to make films. It, there's a there's a kind of an innocence to this movie and a purity to it. I love it when Steve just says, "I'm a." He keeps saying, "I'm a filmmaker," like like you know, like James Dean when he when you know in, in East of Eden when he goes up to his dad and he goes and he says, "Why do you want to do this?" He goes, "Because I got it." You know, it's, it really captures that feeling of being young and just. I'm doing it. It makes no sense, but I just got to do it. Do you remember, too, that, I'm sure, of course you remember, but this film really almost didn't get made because a week before we were to start shooting, the original financer just pulled out. Yes, yeah, I remember that. We, right. had, we, had well. we had nothing. No. We had to start over, and I, and I again, think I, I remember I, you guys sitting in the living room drinking a lot of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was, I had moved to California, and Alex and I had been friends for years, playing pool at Julian's uh, on 14th Street. I just moved to California like three months before that, and I wasn't shooting the movie. I had some guy from Boston was shooting the movie. And he was, anyway, Alex called me up and said, can you come and shoot the movie? And we're going to start shooting on Monday. And this was like Friday. <laughs> and I said, well, I'll come, but you got to pay my ticket back if I don't. <laughs> the film doesn't happen, right? So yeah, you literally willed this movie. Out. <laughs> mm -hmm. You and I know that while we were shooting, we were losing money, and <clears throat> we didn't, you know. And <laughs> I was losing self-respect <laughs> by the minute. Um, but and you, you know, you both were like scrambling to like for like each each. But what an assembly of people! I mean, it's like I mean, I, every everybody who worked on that film was almost. I mean, almost everybody is still my friend. Jennifer and I went to Haiti. I met I. Uh, Steve direct, uh, uh, directed two films I shot. Uh, Lizzie is a great friend of mine still. Every, I mean, it's like incredible. It's like, you know, 35, 30 years later, it's like, you know, it's like one of the seminal events in my life, mm -hmm. really. You know? Uh, and it was, <laughs> it was great. It was great. Thank you, Alan. I hope you see that. Yeah. I hope you see how much fun. I, it's funny, we had so much fun making this movie. I, like when Stanley Tucci was, that, that was like, oh my, my wife eats me. <laughs> the, guy, the guy really did do that to me, but not as fun. It was, it wasn't, in fact, my life was not funny, the, the life that I was writing about. But, um, but, uh, but he my, eats me, and I was laughing so hard. I guess, you know, like, throw a ball and hide, because Steve. No, I, I, I ruin takes. Oh, I'm you ruin takes, but I ruin takes by laughing. I always so, yeah. want, I mean, I mean, Steve and Stanley together are the funniest, are the funniest yeah. people on earth. Yeah. I mean, so you gotta, they, you, I don't think they've ever done it. you got to hang out with them together sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, you gotta I, make I was in a movie that he directed, but, right. but that's like the only real scene that Stanley has. But I mean, I, 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 mean I was on the floor. I would have cramps from laughing. I should stop <laughs> talking so I could breathe. We, we used to go up to Aiden and Lizzie's house uh, for New Year's uh, with Stanley and Steve, and we would laugh straight for 12 hours, you know, like, so hard, I had to get broke ribs laughing. Because they'd write little plays. You remember that? Yeah. You like guys would write little scenes. And... I do want to leave time for questions before sure. we get there. Um, you, you have continued making movies. You made some really great ones, Little Feet, if anyone hasn't seen yeah. it. It's a remarkable okay. movie. Um, how has this experience uh, sort of at, at this point kind of early stage for you as a, as a filmmaker, relatively early stage, sort of informed the way you've evolved? It's, it's, it's an interesting question, because I got bit by the bug when I made this movie, and I, I, for a couple of years I got a little lost, uh, and I started not liking making movies, because I didn't like going and dealing with trying to raise money. I really meant it when I said I'd rather deal with a drug dealer gangster than a Hollywood Hey, Harvey Weinstein, okay? I, mean, I, I really had to deal with that guy. And I, I you know, I, I, you know they're, they're, they're much scummier, <laughs> believe me. And so, uh, so uh, I, I, I really, I, it was a terrible moment because I was kind of like, I didn't know the thing, the thing I love, like Adolfo loves, um, was I had to go through this shit storm to get to it. And, and I don't mind the shit storm of life, you know, that's, that's a beautiful thing, but, but liars and cheaters and horrible people. I started losing love. It was just a really weird thing. And, and you know, and obviously things got pretty tough financially and, and my, you know, I kind of got, what happened to him, you know, kind of thing. Um, so that was tough. But then I kind of rediscovered an aspect of this film when I made Little Feet and, and then other films of mine. But it's just the joy. Go make the goddamn thing. Like, let's, you, let's just go make a film. Like, it's, just, it's that simple. It really is that goddamn simple. 
It's like, what stops us? What stops us from doing anything in our lives except some weird fear of, of something? And, uh, you know, and it's hard. Life's hard. You know, they spank you on the ass, and, and it's hard. But, but, but the bottom line is, what is it? It's for living. So um, I've just decided now that I'll just make films. I don't give a shit. I'll, the money will come. The, but the people are what make films. And, and these guys made that film, and I, I can't be more grateful than, you know, I, I love you guys. I, I, I just, it was, it was, I'm so lucky to make a film with them. And I will just keep making films like that. And some will get seen, you know, some won't get seen because um, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. And you recorded, I remember after, uh, after Sundance, everybody was, you know, different agencies would send him like hot chocolate chip cookies would arrive at the hotel, you know, yeah. and people wanted you to do all these different films. And, and I remember there was this one particular film that went on to be a huge hit and it's, they wanted this big movie star, this guy in it. And, and, uh, and I remember you said, you'd be terrible for that part. I don't want him in the part. I'll do the film if he's not in the film. And you were just completely uh, dedicated to your truth. And I think that's the first place that you start as an artist, is you dedicate yourself to your truth, and then you follow that, come what may. And you don't, have, you don't need the chocolate chip cookies at the door. We all want to know what that film is now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have time for just a couple of questions from the audience.